hey, Dan's on the phone uh, right here. See, it's this thing we go. But his picture's over here on your left. So what's going on, Dan? Oh, well, it's nothing too much, but I just I had a thought here today. I, oh. I was reading a book that you wrote, uh, Magisterium. Mm-hmm. And I, I like to keep reading things. Yeah. You get more out of them every time you read them. Oh, yes. But I happen to look at page 55 again at the bottom. It says, uh, Release is Coming. Well, it, you know, we're hearing all this stuff going on in the world about this, that, and the next thing, and everything's ramping up. Well, you know, there's there's the redemption, mm-hmm. and then there's the restoration, and then there's the release. And the world has a word. They're looking for the great reset. Mm-hmm. But they have no idea what that really is. Somebody I don't know, senses, what do you think, Luke? Somebody's sensing that it's happening. There's a lot of things that intelligent people are finding that they they sense they sense that something's missing they sense something's wrong and that something really enormous is about to happen and um, it it occurred to me that people are all you know running around about the the carbon dioxide but of course that would turn into oxygen that would that's the first thing it does when the plants make wood out of it but mm-hmm. what's really happening what's what's going on lots of big things you know we talked about the the sun, you know, in Revelation, it talks about the sun will scorch men when the messenger pours his bowl of wrath out on it, you know. Well, why was the uh, pavement in California melting, reaching such high temperatures that cars were sinking into it in their tires? Why were the, why was that happening? Well, it isn't because of, uh, you know, what they think it is. The um, the sun is changing, and oh yeah, like Big in time. the last few weeks, well, in the last few months, really the, the you know the 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 pressure of the sun reduced by over thirty percent, and it's not protecting us from a lot of things that would have otherwise, but the sun itself is just a few weeks ago had well it was over a month now. But there was a super flare on the other side of the sun. And mm-hmm. what those flare out of are the magnetic disturbances of the sunspots. Well, there are so many sunspots. When, a week ago, some uh, space weather observers were reporting that it's not in the news, but people don't know this, but there are over seven major sunspots that are Earth-facing. And they have been for quite a while. And the rotation of the sun moves these around, uh, and it, it's towards us now. And it's causing things to happen, like that, the pavement, the asphalt of, uh, you know, the uh, places in certain places like California. The sun is emitting x-rays and gamma rays and heat that we are, aren't hearing about. You know, it's... It's not uh, our fault. It's the sun doing this as a way of making us repent. And that might be a good name for this video, repent. Well, and, that could be, yeah. yeah. So that, that's what I think. It's it's time to repent. That's what it's time for. In, in simplistic terms, basically, we're being microwaved here. Yeah, really. We're inside of a big microwave oven, and we're getting nuked by the sun. Yeah. in uh, measurable amounts now. So so my question would have to be, what do we need to do? Where do we need to be? Mm-hmm. What does our walk have to be to insulate us or protect us from this ongoing scourge that's coming? Well, he says he's going to do this to the earth in various places in the prophets and in Revelation. And uh, the only way that we can get the right to the tree of life which is in Revelation 22, verse 14, is to obey the commandments. And exactly. That's it. That's what we have to do. And well, how do we do that? And why was where was it mentioned in Scripture that we had to do that? Well, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, maybe. And mm-hmm. what about uh, the fact that the first one to say, repent for the reign of, of, of Yahuwah is drawing near. Which you mentioned on this uh, 
<laughs> this neat little uh, article that you that you put together. At the very bottom, you have. Uh, I'm going to show it to him. The truth is in. It's time that you heard. All right. Oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. And this. Uh, this uh, thing at the end, uh, the very bottom of the page says, Repent, the reign of Yahuwah draws near. Where did that pop up out of scripture? Where did we hear that? Well, Yashiyahu, for one, make his mm-hmm. paths straight. And you know what his paths are, his Ten Commandments. But right, the right. Thing this, who was the first one to say it, recent, most recent one, in the uh, first Nazarene? Well, Yahuwah in the Immerser. At right. Chapter, I think it was Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And uh, let me see where that is. I believe it's, uh, let me turn this light on. Hey. Yes. It says, uh, opening in the chapter, it says, And in those days, or in those you mean, Yehukan and the Immerser came proclaiming in the desert of Yehuda and saying, Repent, for the reign of Yehuah has come near. And then Yehusha in the next chapter says the same thing. He uh, had moved to Kap- Kafar Nahum, or Kapar- Kap- Kapernaum, as they call it. It kind of became his home base. And uh, he started to, uh, to announce this when he was beginning to get his, where he had just gotten uh, started on recruiting his first Nazarene, his inner followers. And he said, it was uh, chapter 4 of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17, Repent, for the reign of Yahuwah has drawn near. And uh, that was by the Sea of Galil. Well, that's what we have to keep saying, you know. Well, that's the that's the message. Yeah. And 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 you know that's that's the the Besora, basically. Mm-hmm. And you know where where do you hear that today? You sure don't hear it in the, in the uh, under the steeples. They don't have to change a thing. They're they're observing uh, pagan stuff, and it's just cyclic. It just keeps on rolling their coffers full of uh, money. And they don't mm-hmm. teach the truth. Yeah. You know, there's something else I thought of, too. This was earlier today. You know that poem yeah. that's uh, probably pretty well known by people, Footprints in the Sand? I do. I know that one. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, this story kind of goes, you know, well, there's two sets of footprints in the sand walking, and then, yeah. you know, as time goes on, uh, he realizes that there's only one set of tracks. Well... The common understanding of that is that that's when our Savior carried him. It, but there's it, another perspective of that, and this would be something to ponder, and that is, he said in his word, walk as I walk. When you're walking as he walked, you're making the same footprints that he is. You're walking the same way. You have the yeah. same gait. Everything, the steps you take are the same because you view things through his eyes. That's what we need to be looking at. Yes. Yeah, the perspective of Yahusha. And mm-hmm. whatever it is that you feel guilty even slightly about, stop it. Just don't. Exactly. Do it. Mm-hmm. Get that out of your life. Uh, what are you inhaling? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Get, uh, smoke? <laughs> what? You know, that, your body's not designed for that. Uh, if your weakness is something else, get it out of your life. Don't think about it, you know. But it isn't just you making up stuff. You've got to do what he says to do. And don't tell him to do things for you. You ask him, what can I do for you? And then your whole perspective flips. It's just like, wow, uh, your character day by day becomes him. Mm-hmm. His indwelling. And this this new track that I just finished, I didn't have a chance to mail you. We might get some information out of this too. We can talk more about what's in the Magisterium book too, but 
this is a track call. I'm going to put it up against the camera. What's missing? Well, the main thing that's missing, and I have a question below what's missing. Why is Yahushua's spirit, why is it not received by many? Why does why can't many people get his spirit? Well, the reason is obedience. I mean, they're not obeying, and they're taught to not obey. Uh, oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, and that's the highest form of worship yeah. is obeying. I know. And people think that you have to go to a, a place, you have to go to a house of worship mm -hmm. to worship and do a certain thing or dress a certain way. That's all nonsense. That's yeah. smoke and mirrors and distractions. And then, yeah, they usually have crosses and uh, tables inside that are indoor, indoor altars. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> and uh, But they don't use his name. That's what's missing in the scriptures. They admit it. I mean, if you read the preface of most translations, it says they omitted his name and re put in a substitute as a, as a matter of tradition. And they say, yes, yeah, so that's the way it is. But uh, they don't know well, who they're that's, worshiping. You know. That's very true. But the, the easiest way to deceive someone, this is a tactic that's, you know, used by the adversary ever since, you know, the garden, is basically to just state a bold-faced lie and speak, um, speak it like it's true. But it is a lie. But the thing is, even if you perceive it as a lie at first, you use a distraction to take the focus, focus off of the lie, mm -hmm. and you cause it to sound logical. Yeah. That's logical fallacy, and that's what's being used on the masses today. The yeah. lie is spoken. You don't have to keep the commandments. But then there's something else that's a distraction that's used to take their minds off of that. And that's how they get into this stronghold that they mm -hmm. find basically almost impossible to get out of. Yeah, like the fake name uh, that was removed from their text, and they keep mm -hmm. singing the same songs with the fake name, and uh, they just feel so much camaraderie and love and programming. Uh, the one thing that's really odd, though, is the problem that they because they removed his name, they aren't able to obey because well it's kind of a catch-22 if you don't obey he won't let you know his name you can hear it but he won't let you receive it and then right. when you start obeying even uh, because what's it say in acts 5 32 that the ruach hakadesh in the first council the the, the first nazarene were getting together and they were electing a replacement for the one that hung himself yehuda mm -hmm. and Anyway, the, the, in the council, they said that the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the presence or you, uh, the indwelling of Yahusha, that's the spirit that shed his own blood for us, that spirit cannot be received unless you obey him. That's what it says in Acts 5.32. The Ruach HaKodesh is only given to the ones that obey him. So if you start obeying him and learning his commandments, and reading them, uh, as I do exercises, when I do little sit-ups or leg lifts or whatever I do, not the yoga stuff, <laughs> but I I recite the commandments. The first set uh, is the ten, the ten, uh, ten commandments, and I, mm -hmm. my first move is the first commandment, my second move is the second commandment, and that way we are programming ourselves with His love and teaching us love, and I'm sure he loves that idea. It's just my method, though. It's just, yeah. yeah. But I don't just stop there. I, I say I'm sometimes spontaneously during the day, I certainly before when, first thing when I wake up, and when I lie down. Uh, he said, uh, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And... Uh, you're to love Yahuwah with your whole, your whole heart, your mind, and strength, and you're to love your neighbor, and uh, these things are what the t the Ten Commandments teach us: love. That's everything, right there. Yeah, it is. But that obedience, 
makes his, the measure that you have of him increase. And then people start, to, they don't have to hear him coming out of you. They, they just see you practicing him. And then you're walking as he walked. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he yep. wasn't ju he wasn't standing there uh, telling everybody how bad they were. He was showing them how good they could be by being the best person that ever lived. Realizing their potential. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. The ultimate salesman. Oh yeah. Behavior. Show them the Show them that you can be better, not than that than them and act like it, but to just show them that you can be the, the best person today that you, as if you are, you know, that you've fulfilled it. But you haven't. Of course, we're all sinners. And that was key, that's what keeps me humble is knowing that I could fall any second. But he's got me, you know. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is, you know, to... to um Keep you know in mind, like you said, yeah. we're not trying to be better than anybody else or find no. anybody else's faults or whatever. It's to how how to be better than yourself. Yeah, improve. That, that, that's what it is. It's a personal thing, mm -hmm. and we've got the outline to do it. I mean, yeah, and that's that's another thing too. Like with uh, prayers, that you know that uh, whose will is is being done here. Okay, if you read the outline that Yahushua laid out for everyone, um, you know, it says our Father, our Abba, who's in the Shamaim. Okay, it's your will be done on earth as it is in the heavens, yeah. not our will. And that's where people, they, they miss that. They read that, but they miss it. And they get confused, and they are calling on, him to do their will for whatever problem they have or whatever you know is going on in their life yeah. and it's not it's that they're not focusing on doing his will the all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to his purpose yeah so these are things that people i mean do they really hear this stuff you know in their in their uh, from their prophet preachers i i kind of doubt it yeah, there's two points that uh, I bring up on the back page of this uh, track, and let me read that to you. You'll you'll probably agree with it that people are trained to disobey, not obey his commandments, and because they won't obey his commandments, he won't give them his spirit, which gives them the the the, the desire to obey. Well, in Revelation 22:11 through 15, we find the proof that we have been taught to disobey by liars. And they make stuff up. Oh, you don't want to read the book of Revelation. That's too uh, difficult for you. Uh, but look at this. It's starting at, at Revelation 22, 11. He who does lawlessness, let him do more lawlessness. He who is filthy, let him be more filthy. He who is obedient, let him be more obedient. He who is Kodesh, that's set apart, let him be more Kodesh. And see, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me, to give to each according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now listen to this. Blessed are those doing his commands, so that the authority shall be theirs to the tree of life, and to enter through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs and those who enchant with drugs, and those who whore, and the murderers, and the idolaters, and all who love and do falsehood. Now here's another witness. At Revelation 12, 17, it's impossible to miss this. Okay, um, notice what enrages the dragon. Notice what, you have to listen. Quote, and the dragon was enraged with the Asha, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahusha HaMashiach. Unquote. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are all those commandments? They don't even know. The pastors don't know what they are. 
the teachers, no, the shepherds, no. the false shepherds. And you know, you mentioned about not, uh, you shouldn't read the book of Revelation, you know, being taught by the, the pulpit uh, preachers out there. You know, I was told that same thing in some of the different organizations yeah. that I visited. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you can't understand that book. It's just best to stay away from it. Yeah. Oh, no. To get bogged down. There's secrets in <laughs> There's such simple things to understand in there that they're afraid you'll read it and then start acting on it, you know. Yeah. And there's more. I mean, that was just a couple, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Mm. Well, that's what, you know, that's the thing. People are, are being distracted by all these other, you know, strange teachings and false doctrines, strange fire, if you will. Um, that they're being kept from what they need to know, being kept from the, the truth, mm-hmm. and knowing the things that they need to know to be in the covenant. And that is the only protection that anyone has mm-hmm. this, these, in these last days here, is being in the covenant. Yeah. And I, I talk to so many Christians who think that they're safe. They think mm-hmm. they're in a covenant relationship with their creator. Mm-hmm. And they don't use his name. They don't call on his name. They're calling him false titles and handles and whatever. They're, you know, they're not obeying the commandments. Well, maybe some of them, but, yeah. you know, not all of them. You mentioned the Seventh-day Sabbath. Oh, well, that was done away with and blah, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all these things. But they still believe that they are in a covenant relationship. Yeah. That, well, the, that's a... That's a that's a falsehood. They don't. They are not in a covenant. The sign of the exactly. eternal covenant, and the word eternal means that, is the sign. Happen. The sign of the Sabbath. You know, that's why they can't yep. understand the riddle of it, Revelation thirteen. Uh, you know, the uh, the mark. We're starting, right. We're still. We're still uh, hearing about this in in certain Christian circles about this. Mark of the Beast thing and this can't buy or sell thing and all this stuff going on. They just don't get it because they cannot understand that riddle. Yeah. And missing and components. Even if you try to talk yeah. to them about it, their eyes just sort of glaze over. Yeah. Yeah, what is wisdom? It's Torah. And the Torah is the Ten Commandments. And, uh, exactly. You know, <laughs> and that uh, fourth commandment, which is. You know, remember Shabbat to keep it set apart, and you're not to, to go out of your place uh, more than you know a thousand cubits, because there's a Sabbath distance mentioned at Acts chapter one Two. verse twelve. Acts yeah, chapter one, twelve. Act, yeah. Yeah. One verse twelve. Yeah. The verse Sabbath 12. distance is mentioned there, and that was written at least thirty-two years after the event happened when he ascended. So the, the, he's they're still talking about the Sabbath. Yahushua said, pray that your flight not be in winter during the days of the distress. And the yeah, great, that's the Matt, great yeah, distress. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, no, uh, or on a Shabbat, which is the Sabbath. So the Sabbath mm-hmm. is, is in the future at that point. So. Well, and if you go to the book of Hebrim, Hebrews, it talks about a Sabbath remaining. A rest, Sabbath rest for those remaining. Chapter 4. And he yeah. says it several times. I mean, the, 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 it says somewhere about the Sabbath, you know, the day of rest. And there remains a day of rest. But how, somehow they've programmed people to say, oh, our rest is in Messiah, Yahushua. Yahushua is yeah. our rest. He's our rest? Is that what, is that what chapter 4 of Hebrews says? No, it doesn't say No, that. not at all. Yeah, I've heard that reasoning before, and it just doesn't seem to... I don't even know where they come from. I guess they're just repeating other people's words, and they just keep rambling it on, you know. Well, I think what they do is is exactly what you said. They repeat other people's words, and they tweak it for the demographic. Yeah. They're awed by the audacity. (laughs) Yeah, there we go. They can't yeah, be the wrong, audacity right? to question my veracity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You aren't ordained. Yeah, we are. I think yeah. we've received our orders. Uh, how do they know to discern what's true and what's not true? Well, you can't without Yahushua's Spirit. So if he's in you, 
he lets you see what he sees and then you just tell him what, what you see, what he sees. Because you're not looking through your own eyes anymore. Your character has been replaced with his. He becomes the pilot and you're the co-pilot. Exactly. You're just the, uh, yeah, he's the one in charge. You know. That's correct. He said this. Well, that was pretty good, Lou. I think we're, where are we at time wise here? What oh, let me look. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, we're probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, right at 25.